After the amicable resolution of the crisis in Cuba, the situation in Southeast Kerbin deteriorates rapidly. An engagement between a sea can destroyer and communist torpedo boats has sparked a region-wide conflict. The recent assassination of Kennedy Kerman has also renewed interest in fulfilling his goal to send Kerbals to other planets. I am Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. The SeaCan Navy again would like to work with the Space Center. They have asked the Space Center to help test out their brand new K-4 fighter. Jebediah has volunteered to test this fighter out and put it through its paces. Engineers have claimed that this aircraft will do everything that the Navy wants it to do. But the primary purpose of this aircraft is to take out communist MiGs. So far, Jebediah is reporting that the aircraft is handling very smoothly. The aircraft performs well enough at low altitudes. The aircraft is able to hold considerable amounts of fuel and should be capable of long duration missions. It also includes at least 10 hard points for different weapons. It is designed for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat. And, per the Navy's request, the plane is supposed to be capable of exceeding Mach 2. Jebediah decides to put that claim to the test. And the powerful afterburners do indeed carry the plane past Mach 2. Traveling at speeds in excess of 800 meters per second, this aircraft is more than capable of acting as a long-range interceptor as well. Unfortunately for Jeb, Traveling at these speeds means that his mission is almost over. Sandy Island is now less than 30 kilometers away, and Jeb slows down and prepares the aircraft for landing. Jebediah brings the aircraft in to the south side of the runway and lowers the landing gear. So far, this aircraft appears to be an excellent design. However, how well it can be used against communist MiGs will depend greatly on the pilot's skill. As Jebediah brings the jet in for a landing, he has nothing but positive things to say about it. Depending on how the situation develops in Southeast Kerbin, this aircraft may be pressed into service soon. In addition to their aspirations on Kerbin, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network also has goals in space. They have a stated goal of one day landing Kerbals on the surface of Duna and bringing them safely back to Kerbin. But many things need to happen before they are able to fulfill those goals. In addition to being an exploration mission, this is a testbed mission for future concepts for being able to send Kerbals to orbit of another planet and returning them home. Going to Duna and going to EVE take about the same amount of Delta V. However, since the Central Kerbin Alliance Network already has a network of satellites in orbit around EVE, it seems to be the better choice for this first mission. Between the capsule and the science lab, there should be sufficient room for the Kerbals to live and operate for the couple years that they will be gone. This is one of the largest rockets that the Space Center has ever built, and a landing and return mission from the surface of Duna may take something even larger. That of course will depend on just how much equipment that the mission will call for. Science bases and rovers certainly will add to the complexity of future missions, but the science to be gained most certainly will make it worth it. Jebediah, Bill, and Bob again launch from the Kerbal Space Center. They are already well-known and seasoned Kerbalnauts, having been to the Mun and Minmus already. But no Kerbal has yet visited orbit around EVE. After burning through all their fuel, the boosters are jettisoned. But the core stage remains fully fueled. This will get them into orbit around Kerbin and into orbit around EVE. As the craft accelerates to orbital velocity, Bob takes the time to conduct just a little bit of science. That is the main purpose of the mission anyway. After achieving orbit, Jebediah begins plotting his ejection burn from Kerbin. They are departing Kerbin during one of the most efficient transfer windows, as they will be encountering Eve near their ascending node. So they are able to eject Kerbin and get an encounter with Eve for around 1,000 meters per second of delta V. These are truly exciting times as Kerbals leave the sphere of influence of Kerbin and travel to another planetary system for the first time. Eve is such a fascinating planet, very similar to Kerbin in many respects. Large atmosphere, similar gravity, even liquid oceans on its surface. However, that's about where the similarities end. The surface pressure on Eve 
is about five times that of Kerbin's, meaning almost any rocket engine is useless there. The thick atmosphere may be great for flying airplanes, however, there's no oxygen for jets to work. And while there are liquid oceans on the surface, they aren't made of water. Some have theorized that the oceans are made out of hydrogen peroxide. Others just say they're made of explodium. Perhaps one day, Kerbals will advance sufficiently to be able to land and return even from this planet. For now though, the goal is to land and return from Duna. This is just a demonstrator mission. Jebediah, Bill, and Bob have safely arrived into orbit around EVE. Everything to this point is working as it should. As the core stage runs low on fuel, Jebediah prepares to dump it into EVE's atmosphere. Since Kerbal Kind may one day return to this planet, there's no need to leave debris in orbit. After jettisoning the core stage, Jebediah will then finish circularizing the craft into a low EVE orbit. With all the beauty among the stars, it's hard for the crew to even remember all the conflict going on on Kerbin right now. Nonetheless, these fantastic exploration missions in space are being done during the backdrop of a Cold War. With their time at EVE concluded, Jebediah plots their ejection burn from EVE to return back to Kerbin. Jebediah has waited for an appropriate transfer window and uses a similar process for how he got to EVE. So far, the instrumentation and piloting look like they're going very well. But Bill has noted a problem with the design of the craft. Someone forgot to include an antenna. This was either communist sabotage or Todd. It was probably Todd. Come on, Todd. This means that all the science stored in the lab cannot be transmitted. So the crew will be taking the lab all the way back to Kerbin orbit. Hopefully, a future mission will be able to rendezvous with the station and attach an antenna to it. Looking at the craft's Delta V budget, this looks like it will be possible. This certainly has added to the complexity of the mission, but Jebediah is a fantastic pilot and will be able to make it happen. Everything else about the mission has gone very well. The transfer window planning, the ejection burns, the piloting have all gone well. Bob reports that all the scientific instruments performed as they should. Bill reports that the solar panels and the engines all performed as expected. It seems that the primary lesson that the Space Center has learned is that they need to fire Todd. One can't expect to work at the Space Center and forget mission critical parts like an antenna. Jebediah uses as much fuel as he safely dares to put the craft into a low Kerbin orbit. Then he decouples the lab section and prepares to land the capsule back on Kerbin. Fortunately, the craft was over-engineered and was more than capable of being able to do this. Lessons were learned and are ready. Preparation is underway for the next mission. This time, Duna will be the destination. Similar to Eve, Seacan intends to send a host of probes to visit Duna first before sending crew. New technologies and techniques will need to be developed in order to figure out how to land safely on Duna, how to use its atmosphere to aerobrake in order to save Delta V, and how best to be able to return crew from the planet. But the Central Kerbin Alliance Network has come a long way, as none of these potential challenges appear to be insurmountable. And while not everything went according to plan, the crew was able to bring back a large amount of new scientific data. Data that the research and development facility is able to use to make new technologies. Future missions have also required an upgrade in facilities here at the Space Center. As the situation in Southeast Kerbin heats up, the Space Center needs to be able to handle larger aircraft, such as the new KB-52. This is the Central Kerbin Alliance Network's long-range heavy bomber. With the aircraft's long range and heavy payload capacity, it may continue to serve for a hundred years or more. For now though, the current mission requires the bomber to stop at a couple smaller airfields on its way to hit targets near the coast in Southeast Kerbin. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network is intending to increase their presence in the region. But before landing more troops, they need to make sure that the air defenses have been neutralized. Landing at these smaller airfields has proven to be a bit of a challenge. Surprisingly though, even though it's a large aircraft, it is very maneuverable. The bomber 
taxis to the load and unload point. Here, some cargo will be picked up and then transferred to another airfield. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network is planning on greatly increasing its presence in the region of Southeast Kerbin. So a lot of logistics need to be taken care of. With the cargo loaded, the bomber prepares to take off. The crew now heads to a forward airfield in the region. The eight engines power the craft into the air. The crew now makes the long flight to Southeast Kerbin. In addition to a large bomb bay, the craft does include a defensive armament of four 50 cal machine guns in the back. The machine guns may not do that much, but they should discourage any MiG that tries to get on the craft's tail. The bomber is now approaching the forward airbase. When fully loaded with bombs and fuel, it certainly doesn't slow down very quickly. After dropping off a few supplies for the personnel at this base, the bomber will then need to take off and engage some air defenses not too far away. The bomber taxis to the terminal, but the supplies will be quickly unloaded. The crown crew does their work quickly, and the plane is now ready to take off again. There are some short-range anti-aircraft artillery operating in the region. This will need to be neutralized so the Central Kerbin Alliance Network can operate more freely in the region. The Communists operate some very good anti-aircraft equipment and some very good fighters. Those will need to be dealt with if the Central Kerbin Alliance Network is to have success in this region. As the bomber closes in on the target, its bomb bay doors open. At this altitude, the bomber is safe from the short-range anti-aircraft battery but the battery does pose a threat to helicopters and attack aircraft. But the battery needs to be taken out so that the low-flying aircraft can support the troops on the ground. Thousands of pounds of bombs are released. That should sufficiently take out the target. The anti-aircraft battery fires, but it's in vain. The bombs make quick work of it. These early successes may embolden the Central Kerbin Alliance Network in the Southeast Kerbin conflict. Time will tell how the Communists will respond. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the Cold War. I will see you next time.